Hello, and thank you for tuning in. This is Heather Davis with Eden Cultures, and there are a number of crazy things going on. The coming plagues. I made a video the other day, and I talked about how Torah could literally save your life, and today I'm going to go in more detail as to how that could happen. So please, please, please stay tuned. This is very informative, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to use some things from the Torah, I'm going to use some current news, and I'm also going to use some knowledge I have from microbiology, okay, and my health-related educational background. So, first of all, there have been a number of scary cases of scary diseases going on around the world. Yes, those are very scientific terms. First, the bubonic plague is now in China, okay? I heard of one incident of bubonic plague in the United States that a man contracted from his dog after his dog contracted it from messing around with a dead animal and uh, possibly picking up fleas from that animal, okay? Because fleas carry it. There is Ebola in Africa and two patients have been brought into the United States, at least two on my last account, with Ebola that are infected and they're at Atlanta's Emory Hospital. There are people in Texas, the state that I live in, who are awaiting family members returning after a screening period for Ebola. In the Gulf of Mexico, where I grew up, the ocean is breeding bacteria that is very deadly. It is, it is a flesh-eating bacteria that is killing people within days of going into the Gulf. You're probably wondering, how can I protect myself from these? Now, I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to tell you how I'm protecting myself. First of all, I'm not downing lots of antivirals at this point, okay? But there's nothing wrong with buying them. I have a major point of discord with the alternative media right now, which is downplaying these outbreaks. A lot of the people that are downplaying them don't have any health background whatsoever. I am not saying that Ebola is everywhere. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with preparing. So one thing that my family has in our emergency kit, which I want you guys to get together. It's so simple. You can make your own sovereign silver. I personally would go ahead and buy some extra too now, but if we're if you're in a state where, you know, it's a really bad outbreak and you run out and your whole family is infected, you may want to be able to make your own. This is just a mason jar with a red alligator clip, a black alligator clip, some 99% silver rod, and some 9 volt batteries, the kind with the two little ends on it, the positive and the negative. Simply attach one alligator clip to each side of it and then attach the other ends of the alligator clip to each side of the silver and suspend it in some pure mineral-free water. What's going to happen is a current is going to run through the wire and release silver ions into the water. Reverse osmosis is great or perhaps distilled. And you want the 99% pure because you don't want to be giving yourself lead or any weird fillers like nickel or anything like that. Okay, so you want it as pure as you can get and you can't get 100% pure. It doesn't exist. There is a debate in the mainstream media and alternative media right now, and I'm going to clear it up for you because I'm going to use this book. This is Microbiology and Introduction, third edition, okay? This is what you will take. If you take microbiology in college, you'll probably have this book. And um, it defines what an airborne pathogen is. Okay, but first, let's go ahead and look at what a virus is. Viruses are very different from other microbial groups mentioned here. They are so small, they can only be seen with an electron microscope. They are acellular, they don't have a cell. Structurally, they're very simple. A virus particle contains a core made of only one type of nucleic acid. It's gonna either be DNA or RNA. This core is surrounded by a protein coat. Sometimes the coat is encased with an additional layer, which is a lipid membrane. So we've got proteins and we've got fats. That's what this virus is made out of, okay? And that's called an envelope. All living cells have RNA and DNA, and that's why they don't consider viruses living. If it's outside of a host's body, they consider it inert. Okay, now pay attention to this when I go and define airborne for you. Now, when they live inside of a host, they become active by inserting their RNA or their DNA into the host, and they use the host's mechanics to reproduce. So in that way, viruses are parasites. They live off of a host. They cannot exist without a hoax. There's different types of transmission, okay? There are human reservoirs, such as with Ebola, someone could have no symptoms for up to 21 days. They could travel very far in that 21 days to a higher populated area. Then there's animal 
reservoirs, such as the dead prairie dog that the man's dog was messing around with before he contracted the plague. And the plague is, it is, uh, it is bacterial. The way that it gets transmitted, its reservoir is rodents, like that dead prairie dog, okay? And it carries fleas. So you can get it from flea bites. Okay, so there's a product I use called Century Natural Defense for my dog. It's not a pesticide. It is cinnamon and clove and thyme oil. It smells very strong. It stains her beautiful white coat. It smells like uh, Christmas time or fall cinnamon brooms. And I put it on her coat and it works like a charm. Okay, because all those animals are vectors. And, all, and, and those bugs, they're also in Leviticus, specifically described as unclean. So moving on from the plague, this is not specifically mentioning uh, Ebola, but it talks about all the different transmissions. There's direct contact transmission and indirect contact. Indirect contact is when it goes through the reservoir, okay? So then there's droplet transmission. Droplet transmission is if someone sneezes, there are tiny particles and there are tiny little droplets of fluid that contain this microbe. 21 days after a person inter, you know, contracts Ebola, they are across the world, for example. They sneeze. They get it on someone else. That person has no symptoms for up to 21 days as well. Okay. There's vehicle transmission, such as food, water, or air. Even a fly. A common house fly, also not kosher, by the way, described in the book of Leviticus. If it touches your food, can transmit dysentery. Now, specifically, let's talk about vectors, okay? Because this is one of the problems that I'm seeing in the news, is people don't know the definition of these things, and so they're arguing, it's airborne, it's not airborne, it's airborne, it's not airborne. And I'm here to tell you, it is airborne. By definition, it is airborne. Arthropods are the most important group of disease factors. Animals that carry pathogens from one host to another, and that's insects, such as malaria from mosquitoes, and in my opinion, bugs from China getting imported in mass to our country every day. Okay, fleas carry the plague. And how much stuff do you buy every single day that came from China? When did it come from China? I can order stuff from China right now on Alibaba.com. Do you understand the implications here? Do you understand? Biological transmission is an active process when the arthropod bites the infected person or animal and ingests some of the infected blood, mosquitoes and malaria. That would be a biological transmission. Okay, airborne transmission, it says at the top of this page, listen carefully, refers to the spread of agents of infection by droplet nuclei in dust that travel for more than one meter from the reservoir to the host. Okay, so in the case of Ebola, a person sneezes. Droplet going out. So is it a meter? Possibly, highly possible. Think of how small a centimeter is and multiply that times 100. I think a sneeze could go that far. By definition, Ebola is airborne. Do you understand? I want you to understand by definition. For example, microbes are spread by droplets, which may be discharged in a fine spray from the mouth or nose during coughing or sneezing. They are small enough to remain airborne for prolonged periods. The virus that causes measles and the bacterium that causes tuberculosis can be transmitted via airborne droplets. By definition, airborne. Okay, the plague, not necessarily airborne. Ebola, airborne.